Ball State enters this weekend's MAC championship against Buffalo with a 12-0 record and is ranked 12th in the BCS standings. For the Bulls, it's their biggest game in school history. I'm Tracy Wolfson. It's time now for our college football previews presented by AT&T. Ball State has one of the most balanced offenses in the MAC. They are led by two stars, tailback McQually Lewis, who leads the MAC in rushing yards with 1,570 yards and is on pace to finish among the top five single season rushers all time in the league. And quarterback Nate Davis is second in the MAC in passing, averaging 257.5 nine yards per game. Let's now bring in CBS Sports' Spencer Chilman, who is in Houston. Spencer, the Cardinals seem to be able to get it done through the air and on the ground. So if you are Buffalo, how do you stop these guys? Well, it's going to be very difficult because those two statistics and those two positions, quarterback and running back, mean balance. And when you're able to achieve balance, I don't care how good you are, it becomes that much more difficult to totally shut a team down. And by the way, Tracy, I'm really concerned about this game from Buffalo's point of view. I mean, dropping one at home to Kent State coming into this contest tells me a little bit about the mindset of this ball club who are he was bowl eligible, already had qualified with their victories. So what's going on in the head of the young player of Turner Gill? Are they ready? Are they mentally focused on this particular victory? This will be the first time they've ever played for a championship, and that should be a point of contention for them as well. Well, Buffalo, though, does have some stars of their own tailback. James Starks needs 71 yards rushing to become UB's career rushing letter. leader. Quarterback Drew Willey needs five yards to become the single season leader in passing yards. So the question is, do they have a shot? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's almost like looking in the mirror from that standpoint. When you look them on paper, their quarterback is strong, your quarterback is strong. Their tailback is strong, your tailback is strong. It's a strength. So what it may come down to is who protects the football. Again, and also, I always have to come back and make this caveat clear. When you have a team that's not streaking down the end and has not played in a championship game, that becomes a major liability for Buffalo. I want to see in the first couple of series if they come up from an emotional and mental standpoint and play the kind of football Football that's going to be required to play against this Ball State team that's run the table and has really looked consistent throughout the course of the year, unlike Buffalo. The biggest game for them in their school history. Spencer, a BCS Bowl is out for Ball State if they win, but there is a push to get them to play undefeated Boise State in the Humanitarian Bowl. Yeah. Now, who wouldn't want to see that? <laughs> I don't know if anybody would want to see it. I guarantee you Ball State doesn't want to see it because if they play in the Humanitarian Bowl, they're going to do that essentially on Boise State's field. That's a home game for them. So unless they're glutton for punishment or really have a big ego, I'd steer clear of that one big time. All right, it's that time. Who are you picking? <laughs> you know what? I can't go against Ball State. I mean, that, that goose egg is up there in the lost column for a reason. They're a pretty good ball club. Meantime, again, the tenuous situation emotionally, having been beaten by Kent State at your place coming into this one, tells me that emotionally this Buffalo team is not ready for primetime stage quite yet. Well, thank you so much, Spencer. Remember, SEC Live coming up next. I'm Tracy Wolfson. Have a great day.